first person I ever met that like, um, and I don't know if anybody else ever been through it because people don't really talk about it, yeah. actually admitted to committing suicide. So yeah. like, I know you said you was going through some stuff at the time, man. But yeah. what was that support system like around that time? And that's the thing, man. Like, all right, so kind of backtrack so people can understand like the dynamics of it. Yeah, I was in I was in high school. Um, at the time, I left uh, my home school. I was going to a school. It was about like an hour away. You know what I'm saying? And um, like when I did that, a lot of people ain't really fooled with me or no like that. And then um, people were leaving too because they was graduating. I, I repeated my junior year. You know what I'm saying? So even though it was like my junior year again, it was that senior year. They gone. And then people they didn't really rock with me no more. You know what I'm saying? So they said you had to repeat your junior year. Yeah, because I went to a private school. So oh, I yeah, so to, when you changed. Yeah, it kind of went back. So I was doing an oh, IB Oh, they just program. transferred to the... Uh, nah, because it was like... I was doing like an IB program. What's up, International man? Baccalaureate or something oh, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. So yeah, so I repeated. But I, I was going to graduate at 17 anyway. So I still graduated at 18 on time. Gotcha. So it didn't even matter, really. So yeah, so during that time, I was going through that. You know, I had a little thing with my girlfriend at the time. <laughs> You know, it was tough for me. You know, she probably even see this later. You know, she may see she this. Show? Nah, nah, she ain't in Charlotte, but um, she may see it. You know, cause I post on YouTube, or whatever. Yeah. Right. And uh, um, and I don't even know if she know like that. So at that time, we ended up uh kind of breaking everything off. And like I was saying to you earlier, even though it may be considered puppy love, and I've been to through much worse things now as an adult, but at the time, if that's all you know. Right. That's how you feel. That's all you know, you know, so as far as my support system, I mean It goes back to everything we talked about as a growing up as a dude You you can't really voice that damn man. My heart broken man. Why, why y'all don't fool yeah. me no more man? Why, what's up with my partner man? Y'all don't kick it with me no more, you know, it's one of them things man And it, again at high sight 20 to 20 like yo man, you sound like a little chump but mm -hmm. at the time, yeah, but 18, yeah, 17, yeah. You know. 16, 17, 18, man, that's, that's, a, life. that's your life then. Yeah. That's, that's, that's your life, life right there. Your yeah. friends and your social network. It's, right. Exactly, it's man. Really not, yeah. Exactly. So it's just one day, man, I was just, I was driving home. I was driving home. It was nighttime. I was driving back to my parents' crib. And I was like, man, forget this. Man, I don't care, yo. I don't care. So like when I was driving, I like swerve. I swerve to run into a tree. You know what I'm saying? But something caught my wheels, yo. Something caught my wheel. I don't know what it was. You asked me what was it was. I don't know. It was nighttime. All I know mm -hmm. is the trooper came out because my car went down. You know what I mean? A trooper ended up coming out and he was talking like, it would happen all this now. I like, oh, a deer ran across. I swear. And he looked at me funny because you could see all the time. I was like, you were driving fast as hell. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that was that. So um, I ain't really talked to nobody about it. So I mean, your parents. Like so I think I um nah I, I I told my mom much later what what it really was. So yeah. why didn't you talk about it? Oh, again, because we ain't supposed yeah, to do 17, that. Seventeen, eighteen, yeah, it's like yeah, you're not supposed yeah, to do take that. that. Yeah, let's take me to adulthood to be able to talk about some of the shit that was right. bothering me. So yeah. you can imagine that seventeen, eighteen. Yeah. And you, uh, and about, yeah, you know, nobody talking about nothing. nothing. Yeah, man. So I'm supposed to be this cool dude, nothing yeah. phase right. me, laugh, joke, okay. all this. So me, man, vulnerable enough to like, hey, this is what's going on, man. That's like unheard of. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So I mean, that's what it was. And I'm 33 now, and I just, I'm just now saying this. Mm -hmm. I'm just, literally today. It, the only reason he brought it up because I, I played it to him. Like I made a little yeah. video that I'm on, like. Release it's only like 59 seconds, like a minute, and mm -hmm. no one knows this. And it took me going to like a convention last night. I was in Atlanta, I went to this girl talk global convention, mm -hmm. and they were just sharing their stories. It was just so powerful that these women have been through so much, and they are sticking together. And just the unity in the room, that energy, mm -hmm. it was just so amazing to me. And it just empowered me, but like, yo. Yo, tell these stories, man, because my uncle committed suicide. That's the thing. Like, that's my first time ever dealing with suicide. Like, my uncle committed suicide. Now, was that before or after your attempt? That was way after. That was way after. Way after, okay. man. So, I'm, it was like three years ago now, I think, that he committed suicide. Two two or three. It may be three now. And so, yeah. So, 
when I look at that dynamic, I'm like, yo, he did that. And it's like, it's crazy. You know so what I'm saying? Do you, how do you feel now that you know you're able to share that now? I mean, it, it feels empowering because it, it, it makes me feel, as I start to share my story, I feel actually feel more stronger. You know, because like I own that, yeah, I've been through that, but someone can take something from this. It's no telling. It may be somebody out there right now, 15, 16, 17, because there's a lot of kids that are committing suicide. So it is real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And someone could listen to that, listen to this or whatever, and may take something from that. Take some like, you know what? It's going to be all right. It's cool. Let's talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Like we talk about all the time. The first steps is actually talking. Right. We don't talk. <laughs> We don't yeah. talk, we house everything in. And not even just talking, acknowledging the fact that it happened. Right. You know, that's that's important. Because you yeah. have to acknowledge it. Like you can't just like you said, let it go. You have to acknowledge the fact that this happened now, what do I do next? Exactly. And that's when you start talking about it. Because mm -hmm. that's really important. Exactly. So I, I I can't say that I necessarily had a support system at the time because I ain't yeah, telling it all in. I was holding it all in. So no one knew. So just went through. How did I get through? How did I get through it? Maybe you want to ask, so how did you get through, through it and try not to do it again? I was like, man, maybe that was a sign. Like, yo, nah, you need to be here. You're supposed to be here. You're supposed yeah. to be here. Like, you may know my story too, but like, I was a twin. Like, they, the doctors told my mom to abort me because she was very sick. She had already lost a child before me. She was very sick. And then when she was going into labor, they said I was going to end up being a vegetable or she's going to die. You know what I'm saying? Right. So she ended up, um, so she, when she went into labor, they was like, you know, I'm sorry, your child didn't make it, whatever. So that was my twin. But my mom like, no, I know I got something else in me. So boom, I came out. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, so I just like, I always, my mom told me that story. I always keep that in mind. I'm like, man, I'm destined to do something. So I'm here for a reason. This is your third time. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm here Dang. for a reason. I'm here for a reason, so. And that reason was probably just something that grabbed your tire that night. It may have been. Yep. So, so I kind of know a lot of times, man, in a, in, a, in a situation like that, you know, if one child lives and the other one doesn't, the parent yeah. kind of holds a kind of a subliminal grudge against the one who made it. But I guess yeah. it wasn't really like that with your moms. Nah, not at all. Felt like it made y'all closer? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. My mom, um, because she, she was telling me, like, I actually got a video of my mom explaining the whole story. Hmm. So it, that's, that's some powerful stuff, man. And that's vice versa. I mean, my mother, before she moved down here, uh -huh. I didn't talk to my mom all the time. I never, mm -hmm. really, I never really had a relationship with my mom like that. Yeah, my mom. Oh, but, yeah. right, but when we try to call her, I'm busy. I'll call you back. You know, she yeah, always was too busy for us. Dang. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like vice versa. Like, we, I, talk, I talk to my dad every day, but we never would have talked to her. Hmm. So I, it was like, Crazy, like I. Dang. So, so now being that you're an adult, she's more in your life now. She gotta be. Well, yeah. She you. Well, she gotta be now because she yeah. lives with me. Gotcha. Because I'm saying, but before she got, she was in Pittsburgh. I didn't talk to her as much. You know, it's yeah. more so. I would really go a week, two weeks without talking to mom. So how? So how did how did that feel to have that type of dynamic with your mother, your mother, like your mom? Um. My whole life has been, I feel like, it's been a little distant and gap between my mom, my sister, and everybody else. Okay. So it was more so, I'm not saying, I'm more so, I was used to it because it's been going on for a long time. I don't really talk to my mom or, you know, different things like that. So it was normal. It was normal to me. You know, it bothered me, yeah. but it was normal to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then when she moved down here, it was like, okay, now she's around more. Different things like that. Like when I had my son, she didn't come down here when I had my son. Mm. First parent, um, first time mom, I didn't have nobody by myself but my sister. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, you weren't even here with one of the most important days of her life. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? So, but now she's here and it's like she's seeing my son more and you know what I mean? How I am as an adult. So do you think it's just by default or do you think she actually wants to be more present in your life? Because that's a big difference. See, what well, my mom, I don't know. So y'all haven't had that conversation. No, my mother, when you have a conversation with her, she gets really, 
defensive. Yes, yes. you can't really yeah. have oh, yeah. a conversation. That means she holds some shit in. Yeah. Right, but I feel like some things she's not letting out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so yeah, she I know. don't want to. That's that's why we're doing this. Right. Right. She <laughs> don't want to really talk about it. It's like uh-huh. so. So it's like, how do you have that conversation? Exactly. And how it's do you like, have a conversation? Why do I even want to do that to myself? I know it's going to end in an argument. So yeah, yeah, until she gets to the point to where she can reconcile those things in herself, yeah, it's really going to be fruitless. Yeah, it, that's what I said. I'm like, I appreciate her being down here now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, okay. Do you appreciate that she's getting on your damn nerves? She ain't getting on my nerves. <laughs> one thing on my mom, she likes to be her, and she'll tell you, she, she don't stop talking, first of all. She okay. talks a lot. She real extra. <laughs> So everybody's used to her, you know, yeah. but I do appreciate her being down here, mm-hmm. you know, because it's more so not even for me anymore, it's for my son. Mm-hmm. Because... So he didn't have a relationship with his grandma? Exactly, because it's more okay. so, he wasn't here when he was born, you miss out on a couple stuff and it's like, you know what I mean, my son's about to be five next month. So it's like, there's so many things that grandmothers do for their, their grandkids yeah, yeah, yeah. that you haven't done. I mean, is she doing it now or is she just there? I'll be honest with you, no. Not really. It's so it really ain't like that. Yeah. Exactly. She's just there because she got it. Exactly. Be. And what I'm saying yeah. is not more so like, um, I've seen her be more um, excited about where's my, where's my grandson, stuff like that or whatever. But it's more so, I don't know. Hey, my dad left when I was, uh, when I was 14. And this is one of the things that I'm still dealing with now. Like when I first started going to therapy and had that first session, one of the things that I realized hurt me the most about when he left was that he left and never said goodbye without any kind of explanation as to what was going on. I came home from school one day, see my mom's on the bed just bawling in tears. Mm-hmm. What's going on? Right. Like, left. What you mean? gone. So when I looked at her crying, like I just started fucking crying. Right. And then when I was reliving that story in that first session of therapy, like I just broke down and started crying. Like and you and I just started therapy like back in. I don't know if I told you this. Okay. You did. I think okay, I did tell you this when you started yeah. you said it's helpful and yeah. Yeah. so this was like um I think early December, I believe, when I, when I started. And um you know so at the age thirty two I ain't really cried since he left, and that was 14. So you're talking about damn near two decades. I ain't really shed like no no real tears. Like I had, you know, tears come down my face, like an actual cry to where it's like, you know, you were a kid and you just right. yeah. Yeah. hold it in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ain't had no snot come out, but yes, that's not. Yeah, you probably had a little snot. I, I, I might have, but like right stuff. <laughs> 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 you know, he was in there. I was like, shit, like, and until that point, I didn't realize I was still holding all that in. Yeah. But I, what I remember, like, after he left, because, you know, my father, he was still trying to be present in my life. Like, he went on and moved up to um, New York. You know, we were staying in Longburg, North Carolina. But, you know, he was still called, you know, every couple of days of the week or whatever. So he's always been at least present in some form or fashion. He's never been a dad be dad or a distant dad. You know, so I can never take that away from him, but he would always say, you know, my son, you know, how proud he is and this, that, and third. And it kind of reminds me of what you just said about your grandma, uh, your mother being proud of her grandson. And it's like, hi, right, that's, that's cool now, but where was that when it was really, really needed? It's like, are you doing this to try to make up for lost time? Mm-hmm. Or are you doing it just out of being a genuine good-hearted person Mm -hmm. and so when I looked at my dad it was like how you gonna have all this you know pride now I'm like don't get me wrong like my dad always had pride in me you know as being his son but I started to hear it more he became more vocal about it after he left because I think when he left and then ended up coming back you know a couple years later I think he really realized what he missed out on what he left behind. Like you had a good fucking family. Like why why would you why would you leave that? And so I think that's what a lot of that came from. It's like he started to recognize like damn like I fucked up. But my son's doing so good even without me. And I still wanna be a part of that success. I wanna be a part of that success. 
So that's what it reminded me of with, you know, your mother. She still, even though she wasn't around, she wants to be a part of your success story, right. and her grandson's success story. So that's why I always ask, even when I think about my dad, I was like, you know, would you really be bad if shit didn't work out for you with your other little scallywag? Mm -hmm. That's a whole <laughs> other 